Hey guys, John Rettinger here with an unboxing for you of the AT&T Tilt 2. This is AT&T's variant of the Touch Pro 2, the spiritual successor to the about a year and a half old AT&T Tilt, and the actual successor to the HTC Fuse that AT&T I believe is currently selling. This will be available tomorrow, October 18th. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what it looks like. This will be my first experience using Windows Mobile 6.5, or as Microsoft is calling it now, Windows Phone. So I'm curious if it increases usability. So we'll use, of course, the big old knife to open this up. Let's see what we got inside. And this will complement the HTC Pure that AT&T has in their lineup. This has a full QWERTY keyboard, as you'll see in a minute. So here it is, the HTC Tilt 2. Picture the device on the front with the sort of obligatory circles letting you know it's a world phone, obviously email, GPS, and it has a 3 megapixel camera on it. As opposed to the uh, Pure and the Touch Diamond 2s, they actually have 5 megapixel cameras. This sort of got downgraded a bit. But we'll talk about all those specs in just a minute. Some more information on it and some more info on the back. Let's go over that real quickly. Battery time, 8.5 hours, standby time, 20 hours, 3.6 WVGA touchscreen with stylus, so that of course means it is a resistive touchscreen, 512 megabytes of ROM, 2088 megabytes of SD RAM, and a 528 megabit, or sorry, megahertz processor, and the rest of the business. Let's go ahead and open the sucker up and see what it looks like. So we've got the quick start guide on the front telling you how to use Windows Mobile, and more particularly, use TouchFlow 3D, which HTC, the manufacturer of the phone, sort of puts a skin on top of it. And the skin is known as TouchFlow 3D. They also make the Sense UI for the Hero, for example. This sort of shows you a little bit about TouchFlow 3D and how to use it. Here is the phone itself. Put that off to the side for just a minute and see what else we get in the box. All right, digging through. We're getting some telenav information here. First 30 days of GPS navigation for free. I can tell you that the GPS navigation that AT&T offers, a telenav service, is fantastic. It actually is really, really good. We've got some CD information. And it looks like a screw protector in the box. That was nice. We've got HTC's wall plug with the US plug just sort of plugs right down on the bottom, which I assume is right here. So it just slides on down. We've got a AT&T's, or sorry, a, uh, HTC's proprietary mini USB to mini USB. Let's see if there's a 3.5 millimeter jack on there somewhere. And there is a 3.5 millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and another mini USB port. The uh, HTC Diamonds 2, and in this case the Tilt 2, actually uses a proprietary mini USB port, but it will work with standard mini USB ports, just something to keep in mind. But if you want to use a 3.5 millimeter jack, you're stuck with this dongle, which in itself is a funny word, dongle. And then we've got the USB cable to plug it into the computer. All right, enough of the accessories, that's not why you're here. Let's get to the phone itself. So here we have the Tilt 2. Take it out of the bag. And it's telling you a little bit about on the front. Tilt 2 uses touch flow 3D, gestural navigation. See the AT&T Quick Start Guide. Honestly, who's going to look at the Quick Start Guide? So we'll peel off the cover from the front, which is always a very satisfying thing to do. See if we get that plastic whooshing sound, which we did. So now we've got this surprisingly flush resistive touchscreen. Now, if you used a Windows mobile phone in the past, odds are your touchscreen was not flush. It was sort of recessed. This is a next generation resistive touchscreen. Um, it definitely has a little bit of squish to it, but not nearly as bad as previous devices. So let's go around and see what we have on the device. On the left side, we've got a volume up and down, and we've got a soft button. On the right side, there really isn't nothing. There's a microphone port, and on the bottom there, of course, is a stylus, which is non-collapsible. And non-magnetic. Now the back is really where some of this action happens. So what we have here is the 3.2 megapixel camera, that's fine. 
And we've got this speakerphone button, and this is pretty unique to the Touch Pro 2, and in AT&T's case, the Tilt 2. This whole grill around here is a speaker, and it's got two microphones and two speakers for actually noise reduction. It's got a really cool feature that if you're on a phone call and suddenly you want to put it on speaker or start a conference call, take the phone, turn it down. And it certainly has an accelerometer, so it'll notice that it's been turned and automatically kick the speaker on. It's supposed to be one of the best speaker phones on a mobile handset, so I'm really curious to use it. And this right here is not an LED flash. It's actually a button to turn off the speaker phone, if you'd like. So I will say the back of the device does have a very nice feel to it. It's got sort of a glossy plastic, and that speaker grill in the middle does give it a little bit of a classy look. Let's power this thing on and see what we've got. Um, continuing the tour, though, on the front of the device, we've got a few hardware buttons. We've got what I assume is a send key, which will probably glow green. We've got an end key on the right. We've got a Windows key, and we've got a back key. Let's do a quick size comparison with a few other devices. Odds are you guys are familiar with. Of course, the obligatory iPhone 3GS comparison. When you look at them from this angle, they look to be pretty close competitors. If you stack them on top, certainly the Tilt 2 is a little bit quicker, or a little bit fatter, and it's a little bit fatter for a very good reason. It's got a full QWERTY keyboard. Let's see how that was. Sliding mechanism out is a little bit stiff, but it'll probably loosen up as we continue to use it. And on first blush, the keyboard does seem to be quite usable. It's got a full five rows, so you've got four rows for your actual keys, and a full row of symbols, which should be quite useful. The number keys are sort of staggered all the way through, but not too bad. If you want to dial a number, you can just use touch read, not have to rely on these. But if you are texting with numbers, you have to hit the function and number key. In my full review, I'll go over how the keyboard works and how useful it is, but right now I will tell you it does feel quite nice. And it's called the Tilt 2 because, drum roll, she tilts. And it tilts not that high up, but it does tilt enough that if you're on an airplane or watching a little bit of a movie or a TV show, you've got a much better viewing angle than you would if it was just sitting flat. Or even if you're typing and texting, you know, it could be nice to have that up and type and text. And you'll notice that when the screen comes up, you lose some thumb room behind for using this top row of keys. Definitely something to keep in mind. Goes up, suddenly these top row is right up where your thumb is. Now the last sort of bit of hardware I want to talk about before I turn on the device, you can't really see it right here, but there is a zoom bar, which will let you zoom in on web pages and pictures and a few other key things. So that's sort of Windows and HTC's answer as opposed to the multi-tap method found on the iPhone or the zoom buttons on the T-Mobile G1. And speaking of T-Mobile G1, since that is also a slide-out query device, let's see how that stacks up on a size comparison. So the G1 is known for a lot of things. It's definitely not known for being the pretty girl on school. It's definitely the uh, girl with a good personality. So <laughs> the, the Tilt 2, I think, clearly bests it in the looks department right here, certainly in screen size as well. Size-wise, just about the same. So if you're able to fit a G1 in your pocket, you're going to notice not much of a difference here with the Tilt 2. Let's power it on and see what we have. And definitely stick around to the channel. I'll be doing a full comparison on Windows Phone and how it compares with the iPhone, how it stands on its own legs. This has um, Microsoft's new application store in there, so I'm really curious to get in and, and download things from their app marketplace and see if it's worthwhile and worth the wait and worth the hype. I've gone on record as saying I'm not the biggest fan of resistive touchscreens, but supposedly this has been tweaked quite highly, so you don't even notice that it's resistive. But I suppose I will be the judge, and you'll be the judge of me, so we'll say in a minute. First boot up here generally takes a little while. I'm going to cut off the camera until something happens. Alright, so we finally got some action here. You get a new Windows Mobile, or just got to start calling that Windows Phone splash screen, telling you to prepare your device for first use. It's going to restart the home the screen and it's going to actually install TouchFlow 3D. While it's on the device, it's not actually installed. The first boot up actually takes it through the install process. That's what it's going through right now. Looks different than the 6.1 screen and the 6.0 screen that we've seen before. You've seen in other devices, but you know, an orange screen doesn't quite make a phone good. I guess the quality of the phone itself and the OS will. So let's see how Microsoft implemented their new version of the operating system. So that whole process, I'd say, took about five minutes, and now we get a 
looks like a setup guide. So import sim contacts. I think there's already a sim in there. But since I don't know what's on that, we're going to not import the sim contacts. So we'll hit cancel. And here we are with TouchFlow 3D. Surprisingly, it didn't ask me to calibrate the screen. And let's see what it looks like just kind of on first blush. And we'll do a full walkthrough of uh, TouchFlow 3D. Looks like there are quite a bit of setups guides to go through here. So guys, just a what I'd say would be a short unboxing, turned out to be quite a long one, of the AT&T Tilt 2. For exclusive content, check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers And to learn more about Techno Buffalo, check out technobuffalo.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.